Super. Let's look at the scripture. Uh, I'm going to, this is the third part of the message um, the, that I call hope beyond the temporal. But let me tell you why I, I feel like the Holy Spirit moved on me to, to bring this to us, that so many believers, and some are, are, de, are deniers, but there are so many believers who seem to think that we have this obligation to this world system beyond anything else. Now, they won't say it quite like that, but that is the truth. We get involved in all kinds of things, passionately involved, and, and give our lives to perishing things, things that are, are, are dying, things that are even dead. And I really believe the Holy Spirit has moved on me very strongly to talk about that. Now, I've not gone as as deep and as bold and as uh, strongly as I could. I mean, I could go a lot stronger, but I don't want to do that. I want you to receive what I'm saying, and then we'll, we'll leave that other to the Holy Spirit. When we talk about the temporal in this context, I'm talking about those things that belong to this present life, that, that, are, that do not belong to eternity. They do not be belong to heaven. They belong to this world. And if those things that we are attending to that belong to this world are worldly. I believe I've pointed out sufficiently that because you don't go to the bars and, and, and do all these raucous things does not mean that you're not worldly. When you are attending to the things of the world, you are worldly. You are worldly. And, and God has uh, a command for us to come out of the world. He tells us to come out of the world, right? And so we are to be separate from them. And we're not to touch the unclean things. But we have been told that we should, and therefore we've been obedient. I told you also a, a number of years ago when the Lord spoke to me by his spirit and said, you have been co-opted. And I, and I thought, co-opted? What am, what am I? Am I co-opted? What is co-opted? <laughs> you know? I, I wanted to understand more fully. And I talked to one of our professors here, who a uh, professor of sociology, and, and he explained it even deeper to me what it meant to be co-opted. To where you don't even think like you used to think. You don't, we don't think biblically in every situation. And the, the Lord is bringing us to a place to where we think biblically. We think according to the word of God. So this is what I, I want to bring to us. We always say things that are true, but they are not true oftentimes in our experience. In other words, it, it is true that we are the salt of the earth, we are the light of the world. But is it true in your experience? And this is the question we have to ask. Is that true? Are you really salt and light? Yes, I am. But is there any evidence that you are? It Whenever you and I are focused on perishable things, these transitory things, things that are just passing by, passing through, then we are really not quite looking at heaven. We're not looking at really Jesus coming back. I, I want us to be more Christ-focused. When I was a kid, we, all, we were so Christ-focused. Everybody was wanting Jesus to come. You know, maybe we've been doing too well. And, and, oh, Jesus will come one day. Yes, maybe. But, I, you know, when he comes, I don't want to have $50 million in my, in my, in my bank. You know, I don't want it. Yeah, I, I want to have given it to him because I believe he's coming. I believe his, his, his word. Yeah. Uh, in Hebrews eleven twenty seven, 27, uh, we, we find that in order to really have hope, that is an expectation of God. You want an expectation of God. You, you are not just wishing God. We often in, in, uh, use the word hope as in wishing. Well, hey, are you going to go to the ball game? I, I hope so. Uh, are you going to come to church Sunday? Well, I hope so. You know, we don't say, well, I expect to. I, I've made up my mind that I'm going. going. You know, we, we don't look use hope like that. But here... Uh, Hope is an expectation. I believe God is going to do this. And this is what he says here in, um, in Hebrews eleven twenty seven. By faith he, Moses, forsook. 
Egypt. Now notice the word forsook. He, he, he just, he did not embrace Egypt. He says, no, I'm, I'm going to forsake it. I'm going to leave it behind. I, I'm going to, I've got my eye on something else. Now what is, what is he, uh, what is he looking for? He forsook Egypt first, not fearing the wrath of the king. He, he, he did not fear the wrath of Pharaoh. And he says, he, for he endured. So, so he endured as seeing him who is invisible. So how did he endure the pressures of his present age? How did he go through it? That Pharaoh was the baddest guy around. He was one of the most powerful rulers, if not the most powerful ruler at that time. And he could send his armies after you. But what did Moses do? By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured, for he was strong, for he was steadfast. Amen. He went through something. He endured. How is it that he endured? As seeing him who is invisible. You have to keep your eye on the Lord. And when your eyes are on the Lord, then you can endure these present difficulties. But the song, uh, the, uh, stanza, uh, one of the songs we sing, uh, I believe in you, you're the God of miracles. I believe in you. And so our belief in God is seen by our present actions. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 9 through 13, Paul writes, for I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last as men condemned to death. Now, now notice that. He says, these are today modern apostles. We don't think that uh, they are displayed last as men condemned to death. They're the first ones. They're the ones who are living in the ivory towers. They're the ones who, who live better than everybody else, the modern apostles. But, but that's not, that may be the reason why a lot of us cannot really endure. No, oh, we go, we, we, we're walking one foot in front of the other. But we're not biblically enduring. We're not biblically, as it were, steadfast. Why? Because our eyes are on natural things, things of this world. Now, listen to me, says. This is what uh, Paul says about the first century apostles for we have been made a spectacle to the world both to angels and to men we have been made a spectacle we are fools for Christ's sake we're fools for Christ's sake he says to the Corinthians he's dealing with them but you are wise in Christ then notice notice we are weak but you're strong you are distinguished distinct distinguished but we are dishonored now listen now, condemned to death, made a spectacle of, fools for Christ, weak, dishonored. Notice, that's not the end of the story. Verse 11, to the, pre to the present hour, to the present hour, we both hunger and thirst. Adding hunger and thirst. Now, he's not finished. And we are poorly clothed and beaten. And homeless. Can you imagine? How do we treat the homeless? The, the, the ones who gave us this word were homeless. But the amazing thing, they didn't have their eyes on the present world. They were successful in, in, the, in handing off the baton because they were not looking at what they could get out of this life. They were looking to give us something eternal. You and I should be looking to give our neighbors something that is eternal. Amen. And we will endure. We will get through. We will be steadfast. Not uncertain. Not shaking. Vacillating. But steadfast. Sturdy. This is, he says to this present hour. Very, at the time he was writing this, to the present hour. We both hunger and thirst and we're poorly clothed and beaten and homeless. And we labor, working with our own hands. They, they, they worked with their own hands. Being reviled, talked about, slandered. We bless. Being persecuted. There it goes. We endure. We go through. 
Being defamed, we entreat. We have been made as the filth of the world, the off-scouring of all things until now. He says, we have been made like the filth. We're like bath water. You have made, and, and in Lamentations 3.45, it says, you have made us an off-scouring and refuse in the midst of the people. In Lamentations. So, what, so th then how did they... How did they endure all of that? They got, as it were, no reward in this life. We want our reward now. It's like, you know, having your cake and eating it. We want our reward in this life. But this is not the life, this is not the life uh, that God has given us that is eternally. Yes, he wants us to walk this out, our difficulties out. But this is not all of it. When you look at this life as all of it, you will always fall. You will always look to the wrong source. And some people, I don't want to be a Christian because I don't want to go through anything. And then the other Christians, well, I don't think God wanted us to go through anything. Well, just read the book. I, I, I had a, a young man when we lived in Egypt. He was from Canada. Uh, he was polite to me most of the time, but he didn't like me. He, he was uh, an immigrant to Canada, was from, was from another nation. He didn't like me very much. And, and one day, uh, you know, because he thought that um, he had a view, God doesn't want his people to suffer. Well, my message was that suffering is a part of it. Tribulation is a part of it. You know, it's part of our journey. It's one of the ways that God uses to purify us, to make us strong. You know, if, if you've got a cakewalk and you're just going through everything, everything is going your way, you won't be developed. Amen. You won't be developed. You know, when, when, if, when you look at a bridge, we're building a bridge here, they are building a bridge here. I'm, I'm watching them. <laughs> but they, they, the steel that they put in that building, that bridge, is not the same steel that's in the stop sign nope. or the fence post. Because that, that, that bridge is going to take a lot of stress. It's going to take a lot of traffic. A lot of heavy loads are going over that bridge. And so you and I are like that. We, we, there are a lot of heavy loads that God requires of us. You know, when you say, I forgive you, I love you, and when you don't fight back, when you keep your mouth closed as it were, you know, so you, you have to have something else in view. This, this present world is not in my view. I see something beyond all of this. That's what God wants for us. So don't complain. Don't, and stop saying God doesn't want us. This young man said, God doesn't want us. And I was saying, yes, God does. And when he was leaving, going back uh, to his nation uh, where he had immigrated to, he said, uh, he apologized because he said he had been wrong. He had been wrong. He had, he, had, he had now, through our discussions, realized that God's will is that you and I go through, show the world how to go through difficulty, show, or show the world the one who helps us to go through the difficulty. Yeah. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18, Paul starts like this. This is where I started. I, I didn't start in the therefore because he was talking about, he was explaining something above. I said, we do not lose heart. And, and I, I emboldened that. We do not lose heart. doesn't matter what, what goes on in the world. We do not lose heart. Those of us who are born again. We do not leave, uh, lose heart even though our outward man is perishing. So we see ourselves perishing. That is, we see ourselves growing older and older, and we're not as strong as we used to be. We don't see as clearly as we used to see. Um, and when we read, we stumble every now and then because we didn't see it well. And other things. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet, he changes course. The inward man is being renewed day by day. And you have to see that inner strength being developed in you. And when you see that inner strength, clarity of understanding, knowledge, and wisdom being given to you, you go, whoa. It keeps your eyes on the Lord. It keeps your eyes on 
something beyond this present age. We have to stop being co-opted. We have to stop being taken advantage of by the world system and all of its propaganda and the unwitting tools of the enemy that might worship with us. And then what Paul says is, for our light affliction. What? You know, he called it light. Did you hear all the things that I read earlier? Displayed the, the, the apostles. Uh, God has displayed them as men condemned to death. Made a spectacle of to both angels and men. Fools for Christ. Weak. Dishonored. Hung, hungering and thirsting. Being thirsty and hungry. Poorly clothed, beaten, homeless. Wow. Being reviled. And he says, oh, this is a light affliction. We hate those light afflictions, though. <laughs> Hope beyond the, the temporal. Hope beyond the temporal. Paul says, for our light affliction. These little things. And what Paul is doing, he is... He is measuring it against eternity. That's why he calls it light. You know, somebody punches you in the nose, and your nose just starts to gush. I mean, yeah. Paul says, that's a light affliction, baby. I remember my dad, dad our dad had heavy hands, you know. He would try to, like, give you a little salt pat. And it was like, boom, 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 you know. He would always say, son, son, son. No, no, stop, stop. We're Christians, and Christians are long-suffering. No, 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 don't retaliate, don't retaliate. And I've told you before, I thought, is my dad afraid? Well, I, I was, what, 15, 16? I'm not. <laughs> I, I trust you're getting it. Paul says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is a moment. Now notice, light affliction, moment, is working for us. What? This affliction is working for me. You know, being beaten or homeless or, or uh, not having enough food. Whoa. Re being reviled, talked ugly about, lying on. That's the light affliction. But for a moment, it's working for us. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You notice the progression. It's working for us. So what, is, what does it do? What does it do? It gets our minds off ourselves and this present world. One of the biggest problems we have when we wake up in the morning is that we have our minds on ourselves. It's one of the biggest problems. I don't know this. But it, Paul says the afflictions that you're going through, the difficulties you're going through, they are just for a moment, but they are working for us. So every time that something pleasant, unpleasant happens at work, working for you. So when, when you have a bad boss or bad employees, whichever is the case, working for you. I, I, you know, we often, and I've told you about how when something good happens, we welcome it. And we're just so glad. Oh, thank you, Jesus, you know. And, and something bad happens. Rebuke you, devil, in Jesus' name, you know. We, we hate it. We do. Because we expect only good things to happen. And the Lord, I, I'm so grateful the Lord is leaving me alive and keeping me alive. A lot of my schoolmates I went to school with, they're finished, they're gone. But God has kept me alive and I'm so grateful. You know why? Not so I can suffer a little bit more per se, but that I might be made better Amen. through the things I suffer. Amen. You pour your life into something or someone. Pour your life into it. Only to be disappointed. Oh, I'm thankful now. I can be disappointed now with a, with a good attitude. I couldn't be disappointed with a good attitude when I was 25 or 35. But I can be disappointed now with a good attitude. Yeah, you broke my heart, but I still love you. Why? How can you do that? Because I have hope beyond this present world. I have hope over yonder. Yeah, over yonder. That's what they called heaven when I was a boy. Now listen to what Paul goes on to say. How is it you can do it, Paul? How is it that you can call all of this stuff light affliction and go through all of this? He says, 
while we do not look at the things which are seen. What? Christians, we've been looking at the things which are seen. Come on, stop it. Right now. We, for we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Now what does he say? For the things which are seen are said. Temporary. Uh, Y'all don't want to say it. I only got a couple of who were willing to say it. <laughs> For the things which are seen are temporary. Even if you could pull your wallet out or get your checkbook out and look at that. It's temporary. You, you know, uh, um, um, I, I hope he would, would not mind, but, uh, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Uh, my son, our son, when he was a little guy, he had a bit of a speech impediment, and and um, he, uh, he 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 just made, said funny things. But I told you about the story. And he would say when this friend of my wife would ask him where he was going for his birthday, and she would name a place like McDonald's. You know, better than that, better than that, better than that, and, and she named every conceivable thing. Uh, it, uh, some, everything that uh, you could name, and he said, better than that. And so when we went, so she, she was kind of exasperated. She had run out of places. She said, where are you going, Marcus? He said, I'm going to the King's Inn. <laughs> you, you know, you, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going there for my birthday. They could choose wherever they wanted to go. You know, so you and I, we ought to go, go all past these little little things that, that we encounter here in the world that we everybody else is fighting for and grasping for. Why? Because we got our eyes on the king's end. Th that's how we ought to be. Hallelujah, somebody. So I ask myself, Paul said, I, I go, light affliction, Paul? Condemned to death? Being the spectacle of in the world? Being dishonored, poorly clothed, beaten, homeless? Yes, he said, light affliction. Paul, Paul says our light afflictions are just for a moment, but they are working for us. And then he, he tells us uh, also, he says later, I mean, in, in another epistle in um, Colossians, he says, for our citizenship is in heaven. So he refocuses the believer. I, I promise you, I tell you that the things that are going on now are designed to refocus us. I've said to you now for, for decades, at least two decades now, the things that are going on in the world, in our nation, they're about the church. Amen. They're about the church. Amen. Yeah. They're not about Democrats and Republicans and independents. If you believe that, you've been deceived. Amen. These things are, are about the church. Yeah. They're about the church. They're about you. They're about me. They're about us keeping our focus. Because if, since we are the, the salt of the earth, it's about us. The enemy is trying to discomfort us. He's trying to get us off our game. He's trying to send that linebacker demon to hit us before we can do what we are supposed to do. Amen. Are you still with me? Amen. It's about the church. You're the light of the world. It's the church. You're the city set on the hill. It's the church. So we must focus on those things which are above. L let me do this and then we will do something else. In Revelation chapter 3, starting at verse 17, um, uh, the Lord says these words. And I think these are applicable to us. They are applicable to us who are sitting here. And they are applicable to us, those of us who live in the Western world, you know, Europe and uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, uh, North America, uh, the USA, as it were. He says, because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. So we think, listen, don't get me wrong. I don't want anybody to misunderstand here. I like 
climate control. I like soft seats. I like nice air-conditioned chariots. I like to have a, a good doctor available. And not because my faith failed. I like the doctor because we live in a fallen world. If Paul carried Luke around with him, hey. So, but listen, I'm not yielding to those things. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, oh, oh I'm, I'm so enamored with them that, that I can't, can't uh, keep my eyes off them. No, 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 no. Listen what God says, Jesus says. Jesus is saying, you think you're something? He says, he says, you, you say you have needed nothing? You, you, you got the best medicine in the world? You got the best systems in the world? You're not caring about those other people who are hurting out there? He said, I counsel you. See, my, my wife always talked about letting the word be your counselor. I counsel you to buy from me, he says. I wish I had one of those Pentecostals in there. Right <laughs> Hallelujah. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. Gold refined in the fire. Buy from me gold refined in the fire. And this is what, what God orchestrates this thing. He, uh, he not, doesn't just allow us, but he causes us to go through the fire. It's not, not, not oh, the devil. The devil, what? The, the, you know, jo Joseph says, Joseph says to his brothers, he says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. To save many people alive. I counsel you. Buy from me gold refined in the fire. Thank you, Jesus, for the fire. That you may be rich when you go through the fire. That you may be rich and white garments. Ooh, that you may be clothed. White garments. The righteousness of the saints. That's what he's speaking of. That you may be clothed. He wants us clothed in righteousness. Not clothed in very nice outer apparel that we bought from the best store we could find or, or for it. He says, no, that's not. I want you to have righteousness, white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Without Jesus Christ, we are naked, we are ugly. We are as bad as the worst person. Without Jesus Christ, we're all beasts without Jesus. And he says, no, so look at that over there. Look, look. I can only have this when I see this, when I view this over there. And he says, that your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see your, your eyes with eye salve that you may see. And he goes on, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Let me go to verse 21. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. What Jesus is saying is, look at me. Look at what I endured. And, when, and as I endured, I, I then was, was told by God the Father, come up here, son. And where, this is so amazing. Jesus went. Jesus is a man. He's a man. He went to where no human had ever gone. He was brought up by God. They saw him go up in the air without a rocket ship or an airplane or a helicopter. And he was just taken up. And he was he set down to the right hand of God. That is the power hand. Because he endured. To him who overcome, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame. And sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Buy from me, church, gold. Buy from me gold refined in the fire. Peter tells us, Peter tells us that the genuineness of your faith, genuineness, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I'll be back in a minute.